Well, this is the first time I've been to Greenbelt and I'm very moved and touched by it by this ve very, I think, precious combination of people of a, a broad, non-dogmatic religious commitment that quests for a sort of moral order beyond individual selfishness and greed and self-promotion, that also believe in caring for the needy and looking for social justice. It's very fine and it's, you know, I think you don't find it very much inside lots of churches, but you've all put it in a big field and it's very lovely. And I think there's lots more people who'd like to come if they knew it were here. Um, and I was brought up as a Catholic and my mother had that kind of Christianity, that kind of generous caring for others, an obligation to love and spread justice that um, my poor old Catholic Church seems to have forgotten and is, is, is now so obsessed with telling people what they mustn't do about sexually that I'm afraid it's lost its way and lost me and a lot of others. So I feel here the sort of aspects of religion in its broadest, most tolerant sense that is very attractive and fine and that I think personally that politics broadly, internationally, has also lost its way. It's all about sound, bo sound bites, focus groups, who can take power, am I important, I'm more important than the other one, very authoritarian ways of exercising power. And the kind of renewal and transformation we need in the world um, to get us through the coming crises of climate change, environmental shortage, growing population, uh, potential food shortages and massive displacement of population. We need a moral renewal in the world that says individual greed and atomization neither makes us happy nor can we live like that. The way we live is not sustainable and if everyone in the world wants it we're in trouble. Um, and it makes us miser miserable. So something is going on here that could renew, I mean we need a lot more people of course, but it's the sort of values that could spread across the world and um, bring hope and better and a kind of decency. We have the money the knowledge, the technology that could make mean everyone in the world has the basics that humans need now. We're probably the first generation that could ever say that, and it's really true. And instead of doing that, we're building up arms and inventing new wars and wars on terror that we don't call the war on terror anymore, but it's still there. And of course, the big theme that brought me here is the situation in the Middle East um, and the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I do think with Archbishop Tutu that this is the biggest, most dangerous injustice in the world. We should care for all injustices and you shouldn't only ever care for one, obviously, you don't have to care for one. But it is the one that is bitterly dividing the world, dividing the West from the Muslim and Arab world, making lots of people believe that the post Second World War world order and international law means nothing as Israel is allowed to take territory um, which it took by force, which the whole rules of the Second World War were that never again can anyone take territory by force and the world will always prevent that. So if the West colludes in Israel doing that, why couldn't Saddam Hussein take Kuwait and if we lose those rules we've got nothing and chaos can can ensue. So there's the whole, and there's respect for the UN, as the UN is seen to be not capable of standing up for those rules. It loses its moral authority, and then we're losing the mechanism to deal with the conflicts that we have. So we've got the injustice and suffering, which in itself of the Palestinians needs to be put right. We've got the threat to international order and international rules. We've got the growing bitter division between the Muslim world and the West and the recruitment of people to the belief that only violence will get justice, which of course threatens everybody. And all of this in the face of an unprecedented need for international cooperation to deal with the problems of climate change and environmental strain and so on. So I think it's the biggest issue and I think the political elite of the West are tied into an unbalanced policy um, that helps to perpetuate the problem and is not in Israel's interests. Of course, the Palestinians are suffering, but what 
the current policies are making Israel's legitimacy be called into question by more and more people, and it will lose the possibility of a, a state that is respected, that it, that it has always wanted and dreamed of. And to find, there's lots of people who don't want to discuss this issue, partly because the political elite of the world don't want to discuss it, and anyone who wants to get on in politics wants to be on the side of those who might promote them and blah, blah, blah. Um, and secondly, because, of course, the whole ugliness of anti-Semitism and the history of anti-Semitism in Western Europe, which is a very ugly thing that was there before the Holocaust and culminating in the Holocaust, is so painful and revolting that criticizing Israel might seem like somehow not caring about that. So that makes it difficult and uncomfortable to talk about. And of course, very hard-line pro-Israeli people accuse anyone who's critical of anti-Semitism, which is a very hurtful accusation. So then we've got this enormous problem and people don't want to talk about it and it's getting ever worse. On the ground, it's ever worse. But I think broadly, people across the world are seeing what's going on and knowing it's wrong. But here you come to Greenbelt again and there's all these people who say, yes, we know this is wrong. We've got to talk about it. I've got to understand more. I've got to know how there's roots to demanding justice without violence. So that's another wonderful thing. And um, I do think since the attack on Gaza and the attack on the flotilla and the killing of the Turkish people, people worldwide are more concerned. But we've got to, from the bottom up, really bring the change, like the bringing to the end of apartheid, that gets justice for everybody without violence. And I think Greenbelt's leading the way on trying to recruit people to that view, and that's fabulous.